AQA A Level Physics uh, for the turning points option. And this video, my fourth video, is about Newton, Huygens, and Young. So, Christian Huygens uh, in 1690. Now, his wave theory of light, very important. And basically, the behavior of light, stuff that light does, you know, like reflection and refraction and diffraction and stuff that light does can be explained by light as a wave as in you know water waves in a ripple tank okay uh, and christian huygens um, you don't need to know there's something called huygens theorem which i would like to talk about and it basically says that every point on a wave front you can assume to be a point source uh, and then all of these wavelets from all of these point sources interfere. They add together to produce the next plane wave front. Huygens theorem is very powerful and you can explain loads of things. You can explain why you get an interference pattern with a single slit. If you've got a single slit, then have you only got one source? And the answer is no, because according to Huygens' theorem, you've got lots and lots of sources yeah, within the slit. But anyway, that's Huygens' theorem. Huygens' wave theory of light was very, very important. 1690. Look at the date. Now, 1703, so a bit later, uh, Isaac Newton uh, published his corpuscular or particle theory of light. Corpuscles, little particles. OK, in his book, Optics. Yes, uh, he basically said that all your reflection and refraction, etc., can be explained if you think of light being made up of lots of tiny little particles and these tiny little particles bouncing off and, you know, the cars going into a muddy field and changing direction, etc. And basically all the stuff that light does can be explained by tiny, tiny little particles, not waves. Uh, and it caused a, a, a bitter dispute in the scientific community. Basically, there were people who went with Newton's idea and there were people who went with, stuck, stuck with Huygens' idea. I mean, another one, another guy was uh, Robert Hooke, uh, who kind of invented the microscope and he was very much a wave theory person. Now, why did so many people go with Newton? Because Newton was a, a very prominent scientist. He'd made lots and lots of discoveries, all of his stuff about gravitation and, you know, Newton's laws of motion and loads of other stuff. Newton was a very well respected, important person. He was the head of the Royal Society uh, and you don't mess with him, basically. Um, don't say this in the exam, but he had a reputation of being not a very nice person. And if he had an argument with somebody, then um, he could actually be quite nasty about it. Um, he virtually destroyed Robert Hooke. Um, look up videos about Newton. He wasn't he wasn't a nice guy, basically. Now, 1803. So we're talking 100 years later, Thomas Young. Yay, cavalry has come. Now, Thomas Young described his experiment that demonstrated that light interferes, just as water waves do in a ripple tank and you get constructive and destructive interference. Then Thomas Young demonstrated that light does the same thing. And obviously we're talking about the double slit experiment. Now, Particles can't interfere, can they? You can't get loads of little tennis balls arriving in the same place and you get bigger tennis balls or uh, in certain places, the tennis balls interfering destructively, cancelling each other out. So light must be a wave. Yes. So basically, Thomas Young and at the time, it was kind of very, very strong evidence that light was a wave. I mean, ironically, now we know that light is actually made up of these little packets which have particle properties and wave properties. So maybe the, the truth is somewhere in between. Yes, photons. 